Abortion is the ultimate exploitation of women, says the great fill in the blank. Was it Mother Teresa, one of the famous Catholic popes? Or maybe our current president, Donald Trump? It was none of these people, however. You will be surprised to hear that it was none other than one of the first feminists of America, the great Alice Paul. Feminism has been around in this country since it was established, but it wasn't until the early 20th century that it came to the forefront, and it is still very prevalent today. Feminism is a hot topic in our world today, on a similar level with gun violence, abortion, and health care. It is most especially prevalent among young people, especially young women our age. Modern feminism has impacted us all, but how much do you really know about it? I don't claim to be an expert on feminism, but I am an 18-year-old woman who is told by the media and the world that feminism should be my belief system. And after much research, I choose to defy it. And this is why. Feminism can be defined as the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality of the sexes. Although this is a thoroughly sound statement, there are a few holes that society has used to push its agenda. Women's rights has come to mean birth control, and equality of the sexes has come to mean that both sexes are the same. Today we'll explore the problems, causes, and solutions to the hijacking of the feminist movement. Now that I've explained what will be discussed, here are a few main problems with modern feminism. Modern feminism supports abortion and the destruction of male. Modern feminism supports abortion, while prior feminism didn't. To allow or not to allow abortion has been a raging issue since Roe versus Wade, but little do many people know that the first feminists were actually pro-life. Pro-life feminism yesterday and today supports this opinion. What most people think of a fe feminism is akin to this logic. Can a woman's equality be assured without access to legal abortion? This question has been central to the abortion debate. As Zeigler explains in his article, since the mid-1980s, progressive scholars like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Reva Skyengel have argued equal protection claims which provide a more, quote, compelling justification for abortion rights than the rationale set forth in Roe v. Wade. End quote. Another problem is that modern feminism focuses more on the destruction of male than the uplifting of females. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal, proclaims Lucretia Mott at the famous Seneca Falls Confession, one of the first official gatherings of feminist women. This statement has been twisted and distorted in ways that the first feminist movement couldn't even imagine. Professor Goldman and Stanford explained, Quote, at the time, it seemed to me that any between sex differences in thinking abilities were due to socialization practices, bias, and prejudice. But after reviewing a pile of journalism articles, I changed my mind. Over the past 15 years or so, there are found inherent differences in how men and women's brains are wired and how they work. With this new information, I believe that we should identify and accept these prevalent differences between men and women and acknowledge their different but beautiful characteristics. With these problems in mind, we should examine the causes of the corruption of feminism, including the pollution by a few original feminists and the apparent liberation of women. The pollution by a few feminists of original ideas of the party made their way into the saga of feminism. In 1973, a prominent feminist named Sarah Weddington addressed the inequality women in the workplace face when they get pregnant. Instead of looking at the problem and addressing it by demanding equal rights for pregnant women, Weddington insisted that the problem could be solved by annihilating the child. She claimed that this was just one circumstance where abortion was a necessity for women's success. Instead of addressing the real problem, which was unfair treatment of working pregnant women. Along with this growing belief, at the end of the 20th century, abortion and birth control were said to liberate women, as the study of early women's rights movement explains. From this line of reasoning, abortion slowly slipped into the minds of women until it became the norm. Abortion is not the only way feminism portrays women, though. In the feminist case against abortion, Saren Foster argues that, a, that birth control is the link to abortion. Modern feminism markets birth control with abortion because they say that birth control is a harmless way for women to regulate the amount of children she has without dealing with the complications of abortions. According to Healthline, though, birth control is dangerous and messes with women's hormones. With this fact in mind, the knowledge that birth control harms the health of women, shouldn't we consider if this is really necessary for women's liberation? Now that we've identified the causes, let's examine what we can do to fix feminism, involving turning it to good and asking women what they really want out of feminism. Feminism is a prominent ideology that will likely never be completely eradicated, so we need to instead turn it to good and bring it back to what its founding mothers wanted for the women of America. 
To start, we need to ask women what they want out of feminism. I interviewed a few college women and their dreams were similar. When asked what they think of feminism, many responses were similar too. I think of a woman with her fist raised in the air, a strong woman. Only one woman said she wouldn't consider herself a feminist in any sense of the word. Many women do agree with feminist principles. One woman said, I didn't used to think I was a feminist, but when I looked at the original ideals, I was like, yeah, I think I am one. One interesting insight is many women identified the rights of unborn women as well. One woman said, I think that it, feminism, means that we fight for all women who aren't being treated well, women inside and outside of the womb. Now that we've examined the problems, causes, and solutions to feminism, let's go back to the interviews with college women. Although these are only words from a few young adult women, I see a trend. These women want more. They believe women can do more in the world. But nowhere in the definitions did the words, I want to be the same as men, or I want to reject my femininity come into play. Women of our generation deserve more than being treated the same as men or being told that they need to kill their child to be successful. We are speaking out and demanding better. The new wave feminist expressed it best by saying, our womanhood is being sold for a handful of birth control pills, the privilege to degrade ourselves in Playboy, and the right to abort our children. We are here to take feminism back from those who have corrupted it. We are the new wave.